Hey guys, it's Lotus and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to continue on with our read-along of Guardian. Let's jump right into it. Chapter 13 Zhao Yunlan puts out the cigarette and quickly fishes out his phone. It's almost dark outside, and I only sent the idiot after her. That won't do. I gotta go take a look myself. Zhu Hong asks, You mean the trainee who passed out? Zhao Yunlan looks at her grumpily. Give me the letter from the ghost slayer. Zhu Hong points her chin at the corner of the desk, but doesn't dare touch it. It's a black envelope with red words written in cinnabar powder. To the Guardian, please open personally. After some polite platitudes, the letter inside summarizes the escape of the hungry ghosts, and finally it reads, I shall come at midnight, my apologies in advance for troubling you. The whole thing is written in neat and tidy, thin gold body calligraphy. It can almost be said to have artistic value. As Zhao Yunlan opened the letter, Zhu Hong hurriedly moved aside in fear. The ghost slayer is a god, but not a god, a ghost, but not a ghost, and calling him an immortal ghost would also not be correct. Legend says that he was born in the depths of the underworld, and he has a ghost slaying blade with the ability to know good from evil, tell loyalty from treachery, which earned him his name. From the highest heavens to the deepest levels of the underworld, nobody in heaven on and earth, whether human or ghost, human or god, spirit or ghost, can survive this weapon. Because of this, everyone is terrified of him. Zhao Yunlan is the sole exception. Not only does he fail to be appalled by the ghost slaying, he seems to think that the ghost slayer is a rather nice kind person. The only bad thing about him is the way he talks, too old-fashioned and too long-winded. Seeing that Zhu Hong is uncomfortable, Zhao Yunlan quickly glances through the letter, puts it in his pocket, and tells her, You can go now. Leave the night work for Wang Zheng. Since you don't have legs right now, you'd better stay home. Take a good rest. Oh, and call Lin Jing. Tell him to come back if there's nothing special downstairs. Zhu Hong nods, relieved that she can leave before the ghost slayer arrives. I'll be going then. Zhao Yunlan rushes outside to call Go Chang Cheng. When Go Chang Cheng realizes the chief is calling, he can't help but stand at attention. What took you so long to pick up? Zhao Yunlan is worried. Is everything okay? Go Chang Cheng stutters. Oddly enough, though he got used to speaking with mild-mannered Zhao Yunlan in the morning, his guts twist as his voice comes out of the phone. Is it because the chief sounds colder over the phone? That's fair. I also get really anxious when I have to talk over the phone. <laughs> Go Chang Cheng begins breathing heavily, making Zhao Yunlan wonder if this call will scare him into a heart attack. When Go Chang Cheng continues to struggle without getting out a single word, Zhao Yunlan sighs. <sighs> Is anyone else there? If so, put them on. And if not, hand the phone to Da Ching. Relieved, Go Chang Cheng hands the phone to Professor Shun. Fortunately, Professor Shun is the reliable type. He efficiently summarizes what happened to Li Qian and how they got her to the, to the hospital, then asks, What's wrong? Is Li Qian still? The phone makes a loud but indiscernible noise. Hello? Shen Wei says. Zhao Yunlan seems to be saying something, but the signal is unstable. Shen Wei walks towards the window, ostensibly to get a better signal. But with Go Cheng Cheng distracted, he also opens the curtain and looks outside. Hello? What did you say? Can you still hear me? Zhao Yunlan's voice finally becomes clear. Damn it! Get out of there! Now! A black shadow flashes in front of Shen Wei's eyes, making him blink. All lights go out. Glass shatters. The cat screeches and jumps. A gust of wind hits Shen Wei, carrying a foul odor of blood and decay. In the darkness, nobody sees Shen Wei grabbing up into thin air then spreading his hand to see a blood-red worm writhing there in fear. Expressionless, he crushes it. Then he takes a deep breath to control his fury. Badass Shen Wei. <laughs> Zhao Yunlan, on the other hand, seems to be saying something, but the interference is too strong and nothing can be made out. The place is in utter chaos. The cat is screeching and things are falling over, and someone knocks down a steel chair. Shen Wei stumbles backwards, and the phone connection dies for lack of a signal. He turns the flashlight on the phone to maximum and shines it ahead of him. An unfamiliar male voice shouts, Watch out! It's Da Ching, 
who had ju who had who just knocked down the chair with wait it's da ching who just knocked down the chair which knocked the panic go chang chung on his ass as well <laughs> shen wei grabs a mop from the corner of the room by its wooden handle and attacks there's a crash and collision sound and a black shadow rapidly flies over his head when he lowers his hands, the wooden handle is split in two. The shadow is darting towards Li Qian at lightning speed. The sedated Li Qian is lying unconscious on the bed. Their eyes are getting used to the darkness by now, and in the light of Shen Wei's phone, they can see a dark shadow. Its mouth is open more than 90 degrees, so that its head looks like a sliced watermelon. Mmm. Go Chang Chung doesn't even have time to think. It doesn't have even time to faint. His heart almost stops. His mind goes blank and his limbs give out. He falls to the floor, quivering uncontrollably in terror. A voice screams in his head. What is that thing? What on earth is it? The black shadow takes the shape of a human, skinny and slender like a skeleton, but with a frighteningly large belly. Its hands turn into scythes and viciously slash down towards Li Qian's stomach. Go Chen Cheng finally finds his voice again and starts screaming. Shen Wei leaps forward, but someone else beats him to it, getting between Li Qian and the ghost. It's an old lady come out of nowhere, short and plump, with a ridiculous wig on her head. She stretches her arms wide open and uses her body as a shield to protect the girl on the bed. Shen Wei stops his, his instinctive forward motion at once. Surprisingly, nobody has noticed his abnormal action. Then he grabs the steel chair and hurls it at the black shadow. The chair hits its target full on, crashing onto the shadows, crashing into the shadow's body and splitting it in half. The thing shrieks like an angry or or orangutan. <laughs> shrieks like an angry orangutan. The two halves of its body now only connected by a small segment. However, soon its body bubbles as if boiling, gurgling like a midnight nightmare monster. The two halves of the body sway violently, and, as the mouth howls in a terrifying voice, they slowly merge back together. It's growing back! It's growing back! Go Chang Chung shouts, not being of any help. Shen Wei swoops in, picks up the steel chair once again, and starts battering at the monster. Professor Shun is a gentleman, but his attacks are precise and vicious. While others are still gripped by fear and don't know what to do, he smashes the thing into several pieces. Not even out of breath, he tosses the chair aside. For two seconds, there is silence. Then, Da Ching jumps onto the headboard of Li Qian's bed and says with trembling whiskers, Don't just stand there. Let's go. There's a hungry ghost. You can't kill it with a steel chair. It's just a fluke that there was plenty of yang in this room. If it really gets angry, we're screwed. Shen Wei stares at the black cat. Yes, yes. Da Ching says in a serious tone, I'm talking, and you almost split a hungry ghost in half with a chair. Let's not dwell on it. Let's go. Shen Wei must have nerves of steel. Before Da Ching is finished, he bends down as if waking from a dream and picks up Li Qian. In this emergency, he even speaks to the cat. What about the old lady? The cat replies, Don't worry about her. She's She'll follow. She's not a person. She's a new ghost. Oh. Shen Wei sounds like he's abandoned all ideas about physical reality. He says to Go Chang Chung, Come now, Officer Go, let's go! Go Chang Chung's mouth gapes in terror, and his neck is frozen in a bizarre position. Shen Wei, carrying Li Qian on his back, raises his voice, Officer Go! Go Chang Chung wakes up as if from a dream. He flails around on the floor like an octopus, until he finally manages to get his legs back under him. I, I, I... Enough! Come, open the door for me! Go Chang Chung dot exe has stopped working, and he mindlessly follows orders, scrambling over to the door. The corridor is pitch black, and the entire hospital is dead and empty like a ghost building. There's not a single nurse or doctor in sight. The black cat runs ahead, incredibly agile for his size. Shen Wei follows with Li Qian on his back, Go Chang Chung stumbling along at the rear. Their footsteps echo through the empty hallway. A chilling breeze tails them, and Go Chang Chung shivers. He's sure there's something following them. End of chapter 13. Okay, so... Um... An evil apparition has come to target Li Qian because it failed the first time. 
And Shun Wei has got some moves. He's got some powers. He's got some moves. He is unfazed by all of this. He takes a chair and starts swinging. And he does really well. He like slices the apparition in half. Uh, da Ching decides to blow his cover and speak to Shun Wei. And Shun Wei is taking it pretty well. <laughs> and of course, as always, Go Chang Chung does not know what to do. Now they're on the run. But we're pretty sure that the apparition is still following them. Let's continue on to chapter 14. Chapter 14. But Go Chang Chung doesn't dare turn around. He grew up around older people who taught him a lot of superstitious beliefs, including this popular one. Don't turn around when you walk at night. Otherwise, ghosts will catch you. Although Go Chang Chung desperately tries to stay calm, he keeps thinking about what happened in the room. And he can't help but feel that the thing might be catching up to them. That vicious monster wouldn't care if you turned around or not. It has scythes for hands. Go Chang Chung feels his neck and is quite sure he wouldn't survive a single slash. Go Chang Chung's rich imagination continues to haunt him. He thinks of photos of the young girl in the alley, her stomach sliced open and emptied. It's enough for months of nightmares. Turn around, don't turn around. Turn around, don't turn around. To turn or not to turn, his dilemma torturing him. And soon his forehead is covered in cold sweat. He wipes it off and speeds up, catching up with Shen Wei who is still carrying Li Qian. His instinct is to throw himself at Shen Wei, shouting for help. Go Chang Chung has always been conflict averse, just as a cat's instinct is to eat fish and a dog's to eat meat. His instinct is to run away. And right now, this instinct tells him that the safest place is between Da Qing and Professor Shen. He really doesn't want to be the hindmost taken by the devil. Suddenly, Shen Wei stops. Li Qian starts moving, gradually regaining consciousness, and Shen Wei has to adjust his hold on her body a bit. Oddly, Go Chang Chung doesn't keep moving forward to stand between Da Qing and the professor, but instead stays behind the professor. He turns sideways to check his surroundings. It's an almost protective position. Aww, good job, Go Chang Chung. He suddenly remembers something. I'm a police officer. I'm a policeman. I'm a police officer. I'm a police officer. He repeats like a chant, as if it would make him braver. But the words are not a magical spell after all. He's still frightened out of his wits. He feels his vision blurring as chance, and as he raises his hand to his face, he encounters Shen Wei's stunned gaze. Only then does Go Chang Chung realize that he's crying. Oh no, oh no, poor Inter. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's understandable. Your reaction is is really understandable as a as a normal civilian. I mean, I know this is literally your second day on the job, so understandable that you're freaking out. Professor Shun's concern concern tape Concert, concertnation is understandable. He's an ordinary lecturer and he has really seen it all today. A murderous sentient shadow, a talking cat, and a cowardly crying cop. Go Chang Chung himself doesn't even understand why he's crying, but he notices that it helps better than chanting to vent his emotions and reduce his fear. So he takes a deep breath, letting his tear flow freely, and balls, balls, run, I'll stay behind to protect you. Shen Wei only blinks at him wordlessly. <laughs> He's like, are you sure? Are you okay? He has seen enough insanity by now to be numb to it. They start running again, and soon the cat reaches the stairs and points to the front door. The group sprints up the stairs, Shen Wei laying the way with Go Chang Chung's phone. The light splashes across something in a corridor, and Go Chang Chung screams in terror. Even though Go Chang Chung's brain is useless, his lung capacity is still quite good. Shen Wei takes a closer look and sees an infant by the wall. No, it's closer to a fetus. It's very small, even smaller than a newborn baby. Its head is damaged and the skull is exposed. Its face is contorted and it has no teeth. The creature looks like a medical specimen, propped against the wall, its hollow eyes staring up at the group. Stop screaming, Da Ching says. This is a hospital, it's full of yin energy. Of course there'd be ghosts everywhere. Are you a country bumpkin who has never seen the world? Stupid human. Shen Wei asks dryly, What is that? An aborted fetus. Da Ching scratches at the infant, which lets out a mule and vanishes. Keep moving. The hungry ghost is catching up. Speak of the devil, the gang soon smells the foul decaying odor again. As they run forward, heavy footsteps come thumping along behind them. W what's that? 
Go Chang Chung screams in tears. Is it the hungry ghost just a shadow? Why does this sound like something heavy? I effing said it. This is a hospital. There are all sorts of ghosts around. Da Ching shouts. And are you discriminating against heavy people? What's wrong with being heavy? Huh? Heavy doesn't hurt anyone, does it? Heavy is good. Shen Wei cannot imagine what kind of work environment Zhao Yunlan is used to, considering he has such peculiar colleagues. Shen Wei doesn't seem tired at all, although he's carrying a person on his back. Like a teacher facing a problem child, he says calmly, Cut the noise, you two. Kitty, where's the exit? Don't call me that, stupid human. Godly cat. Shen Wei changes his tone without losing a beat. We have been running in circles for quite some time now. Do you have a brilliant plan? Da Qing stops abruptly, so Shen Wei nearly runs into him. He steps aside and only narrowly misses him. Go Chan Cheng looks half dead as he leans against the wall, crying and gasping. Da Qing pricks up his ears and looks around, his eyes glimmering under the dim light of the phone. After a moment, he turns back to the group and says calmly, I think we're in a ghost labyrinth. The heavy stomping comes closer, from the front this time, and a blurred shadow is cast on the wall, something writing within it. At a closer look, it turns out to be dozens of humanoid shadows struggling and writhing in a giant cluster, scratching and screaming and stomping on each other. Every day, countless people die in a hospital. Their spirits wander around endlessly. They envy the living and they prey on life energy, but they can't get close. The living and the dead cannot coexist. That kind of resentment, that kind of despair. Run! Da Ching thinks this is his phrase of the night. Give him a starting gun and he can almost host the Olympic Games. Taking off at top speed, the three people and the cat scramble into a small storage room. Go Chen Chung desperately pulling the rusty door shut behind them. Tears are streaming down his face. He cannot believe he's still alive. A freezing hand has reached for his neck just then and almost caught him. The chill lingers. Shen Wei puts Li Chen down and helps Go Chang Chung move furniture to block the door. Before they can even breathe a sigh of relief, something crashes against the door from the outside. Go Chang Chung falls on his butt in fear. Again and again, the door rattles under the attack. Then it stops. The banging is soon replaced by the screech of fingernails scratching against the iron door. Go Chang Chung, who has slumped against the door on the ground, jumps up as if electrified, his skin standing up in goosebumps. Through his tears, he says to Shen Wei, I haven't even gotten my first paycheck. Can I at least get my salary before I die? Shen Wei knows that laughing is inappropriate in this situation, but he really doesn't know what to do with Go Chang Chung. Go Chang Chung sobs and asks, Professor Shen, do you have any unfulfilled wishes? Shen Wei is unfazed, but he takes the time to consider the question anyway. He nods. Yes, there's this person. We met by chance. I'm just a stranger to him. He doesn't know anything about me, nor is there anything between us, he says softly amidst the screeching fingernails. But I want to see him again. End of chapter 14. Okay. Oh, ooh, eyebrow raise. Ooh, I wonder who this person that he just met recently that he wants to see again. <coughs> Jiao Yulan. <coughs> Jiao Yulan. Shen Wei is whipped. He is absolutely whipped for Jiao Yulan. Um... Whipped with a capital W. <laughs> uh, and wow, there's a lot of horror going on in this chapter. They're running around the hospital. They're they get they end up somehow in a ghost labyrinth, and they're encountering ghosts and apparitions left and right. They don't see the one that was chasing Li Chen currently, but they saw a dead fetus. They saw a bunch of dead people who committed suicide or who died in the hospital, and they're all like writhing together. They're all like tightly in a cluster. Like, ooh, the imagery is so grotesque and gory. Ugh. And of course, Shen Wei, our dear Professor Shen, is so cool. He is taking everything like a champ. He is just like all in the day's work, right? As a professor, I gotta expect anything and everything. <laughs> and so, for him, honestly, I think he's. Out of everything he's seeing, he's most bewildered by Go Chang Chung. Like, honestly, he seems to not lift his eyebrows at anything, but every time Go Chang Chung speaks, Shen Wei is just flabbergasted. <laughs> so, I mean, I really appreciate Go Chang Chung. He's really like the comic relief here, and he makes he makes the situation less scary. And so, thank you, Go Chang Chung, for your service. You do have a good talent of making the situation more lighthearted, despite 
being chased by uh, the dead, the undead. <laughs> so anyway, that's it for chap. That's it for today's read along, chapter thirteen and fourteen. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.